If you're like me, you like your black and white images, but sometimes just black and white isn't quite enough. And that's when I personally will turn to the split toning module. And that is the subject of this video. Let's get into it. Hi, and welcome to episode 38 of Understanding Dark Table. First up, apologies for the bellbirds. Yes, I know, they're outside the window and you will hear them through the video. Not much I can do about it. Sorry. Okay, so split toning. In the intro, I said that you would use this with black and white images, but you don't have to. You can use it with colour images if you want to. But let's just dive right on in. This is an image I shot a few years ago in a wool shed way out in the middle of New South Wales. If we jump back to the original state, we can see all of the colour information. I used the Colour Zones module to make it black and white. I applied a little bit of local contrast and a tone curve, and then I went to split toning. Now, if we look at the split toning module, you can see that we've got a hue slider and a saturation slider for the shadows, and then we've got a hue slider and a saturation slider for the highlights. We've then got a balance control and a compression slider. Now, let me just reset that module. So defaults are saturation set to 0.5 for both the shadows and the highlights, and these tones here for, respectively, shadows and highlights. Now, if we want to introduce a colour to the shadows, let's just turn the saturation for the highlights right off. Actually, let's turn the saturation off for the shadows as well. So at the moment, we are looking at a monochrome image. There are no colours introduced to either the shadows or the highlights at this point in time. If I decided I wanted, let's say, cool shadows, so, so blues in the shadows, I can do one of two things. I can either just drag this hue slider manually up to the blues section of the hue slider and then introduce as much saturation as I want to introduce into my shadows. And as I increase that saturation, we can see more and more blue coming into the shadows of this image. The other option is to click on the color swatch here, which brings up this select tone color swatch. Now, you can use one of these predefined tones, or you can click on the plus button here to access your typical color picker. And you could then go to the blues and you could decide what tone of blue you wanted, click on select, and that will change both the hue and the saturation slider according to the tone that you picked. Personally, for me, I prefer to just do it manually and select, you know, my hue and then the amount of saturation that I want. Let's suppose that for our highlights, we wanted a bit of a creamy yellow, you know, because we want to give this a bit of an aged vintage kind of look. So I could just move my hue slider for the highlights to the yellows, introduce some saturation until my highlights start to inherit that kind of yellowish look, which I'm not really seeing. My histogram is showing it, but I'm not really seeing it on screen here. Before we get too hung up on that, let's just have a look at the balance. To me, I've always felt that this balance slider is back to front because it's allowing you to choose a bias between shadows and highlights, but it has highlights to the left and shadows to the right, which to me feels back to front. You know, the histogram has shadows on the left and highlights on the right, so why doesn't the balance slider work in the same direction? So if I wanted to bias this towards my highlights, I can bring this to the left and now we can see all of those yellow highlight tones coming through in the image. If I was to drag this to the right, then we can see there is much stronger blue tones in the shadows and much less of the yellow in the highlights. So that balance control just allows us to choose the balance between split toning the highlights and split toning the shadows. If you want an equal balance of both, then you could simply right click on the slider, type in 50, hit enter, 
and there you go. You're at exactly 50%, which means we've got an equal balance of split toning to our highlights and our shadows. Now, how much that happens will be dictated by the saturation control that you've introduced on each of those uh, areas for the shadows and the highlights. The other control that we've got is the compression slider. Now, if you've followed my videos right from episode one, we have already covered compression. And in the split toning module, this defaults to a value of 33%. Now, at a value of 0%, what will happen is that the split toning to your shadows will affect all luminosities from pure black right up to the middle value of tones. So if we assume 256 tones, because we're going to export to a JPEG, then with the compression slider set at zero, our split toning of the shadows will affect all luminosities up to a value of 127. And the highlight split tone will affect all tones from 128 to 256, right? As we increase this compression slider, we are forcing those split tones to now be limited only to those shadows down there and those highlights up there, but protect the mid-range values. So the mid-tones of our image are purely monochrome and the split toning is only happening in the deep shadows and in the bright highlights. So once you get right up to extreme values in the 90s, you're only doing this really small range of you know, shadows right at the very darkest end of the luminosity spectrum and you're only affecting the briefest you know, range of tones of highlights at the extreme bright end of the, the spectrum, if you like. So that's how that compression slider works. How far you drive it, that's entirely up to you. In the Patreon version of this episode, I'll go into that a little bit deeper as to how we can see just how much is happening. But that is essentially how the split toning module works. So for me, if I wanted to, uh, you know, split tone this with these tones, I'd probably want a little bit more of the blue in there, probably somewhere about there. And the compression, I might just up that a little bit to something like that. And that's before and that's after. And it kind of gives a little bit of a I don't know if you'd call it a vintage look or what you would call it, but it just takes it away from being purely monochrome. So how you would use this on color images, that's, again, it's the same approach and it really just comes down to what kind of a look you are after. Now let's jump over to another image and keep on looking at the split toning module. This is an image I shot of Ama on my Little Red Riding Hood shoot a couple of years ago. This is where we started. Uh, I changed the white balance, exposure, filmic, crop. Don't know why I used levels, but I did. Did a quick retouch for a flyaway hair. Bit of color zones to make it monochrome. Bit of a tone curve and then some vignette. Okay, so if I wanted to do the same sort of thing with the split tone, what would I do? Well, let's turn the module on. So that's our starting point. Let's suppose that, yes, I did want to keep the uh, shadows in the red section of the spectrum. I probably want to drop the uh, saturation back a little bit. I might just bring the highlights into the yellows a little bit. Yeah, that's probably about where I'd go for that. Like I said, all of this is very subjective and comes down to what you like in your images. But that, my friends, is how the split tone module works. All right, I think that will pretty much do it for this episode. 
Patreon supporters on tiers three and four, you guys are going to get a slightly deeper dive into the split toning module in the episode extension. And I would like once again to say thank you very much to my Patreon supporters. Your support is very much appreciated, as is the support from all of you guys on YouTube. I love seeing the comments that appear. And if you use the split toning module, in some other way or you know have a different approach to using it please sing out in the comments down below i'd love to hear if you have other approaches all right that's going to do it for this week oh oh i am planning a photo shoot with tegan you've seen tegan in other videos i'm pretty sure i've used images of her uh where we're going to go out and do an autumn colors shoot uh that would be a fall colors shoot for the american audience and I, it's funny, we were talking about this on Shutter's Inc. when we recorded last night, and I said to Glyn that I've said to Tegan, I want you to make your wardrobe blue, you know, wear blues, because that will complement the colours of the leaves, you know, which are at the moment here in Australia, we're getting all these yellows and oranges and reds of the, of the deciduous leaves, and I cannot understand why photographers generally put their models in you know these muted tones you know it seems to me why wouldn't you go for the other side of the color wheel with the wardrobe selection so interestingly i did a google search last night looking for inspiration images and i actually did not find a whole lot of images where you know photographers have put their models into you know, blues for autumn coloured shoots. So maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree or maybe I'm just a radical trendsetter. I have no idea. It's probably the former. But we will see in the next episode, hopefully. So if it all goes well, I will have some images to, uh, to use in forthcoming videos from that shoot with Tegan. All right, now I'm done. I will see you in the next one.